All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us again today for another edition of our Franchise Sales and Marketing Trends uh, monthly webinar and educational session that we do. And we, we uh, do this session every month to bring to you the latest and the greatest on what we see in some uh, macroeconomic trends and some micro and small business and franchising trends to see if this information can help you maybe with your franchise sales and marketing process, maybe to make some new decisions that you need to make for the growth or direction your business is looking to take, or just to have some insights on how to be pre better prepared to have conversations with your prospects as they come into uh, your franchise sales pipeline. So if um, my name is Tom Dufour, I'm the founder and CEO of Big Sky Franchise Team, and I will be sharing my screen to do a quick action uh, 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 review of several different data sources. Now, uh, just so that you know, if you want to watch this again or catch this again, we will publish this up on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcast called Franchise Your Business. If you have not subscribed to that podcast, please do that. That's where we repurpose and republish all of these live webinar sessions we do. And secondly, go to our second podcast called Multiply Your Success, Multiply Your Success, where 220 episodes into that uh, weekly podcast that's been going for, uh, for almost four and a half years now. So really, really looking forward to our session today. So with that, I will go ahead and uh, uh, share my screen. And if you have any questions or anything that come up, comes up along the way, I will leave some time at the end, but please feel free to just go ahead and uh, type something into one of the chat box or question uh, box or raise your hand and I will unmute you. If I don't see it, I will try to uh, glance up as I'm uh, managing the show live myself right now. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Share screen. There we go. Okay. So the first uh, reports I like to share and talk through is from the Institute for Supply Management. They have these three reports here that they publish each month. Uh, one is the manufacturing PMI. The second is the services PMI. And the third is hospital PMI. So we'll take a look at these reports. So this is the manufacturing purchasing managers index report. And uh, it looks like, uh, let's see, it says the U.S. Uh, uh, Manufacturing sector contracted for the fifth consecutive month in August as the manufacturing PMI registered 47.2 percent, uh, uh, up 0.4 percentage point compared to July's reading of 46.8 percent. Uh, after breaking a 16-month 16, 16 streak of contraction by expanding to March, the manufacturing sector has contracted the last five months, but at a slower rate in August. So you can see on, I'll zoom in a little bit on this report here. You can see uh, how this has been. 2022 was this decline. 2023, uh, it was relatively flat with a little bump kind of moving up. And we've started to see a little edge up in 2024, but still in that negative territory. So when people, to me, this manufacturing uh, purchasing manager index report is a leading indicator to say, well, what's going on in the, the economy? What are we going to be feeling? Well, we're feeling today likely where we were a year or 18 months ago. And so what we're seeing today is likely what we'll be seeing or feeling a year or 18 months or so from now um, in, in my assessment on this. And uh, so what, what can you make of it? Well, to me, this just indicates because we're below this manufacturing break-even line, we are above the overall economy break-even line, but we're in this territory that I would just describe as soft. It's just this it's it, it when you're looking at your own business or com companies you might be working with, you say, well, it just doesn't feel as robust. Well, this, this, indi this, to me, this report is an indicator of saying, well, your your sentiment or your your intuition is probably right on that. Okay, next up, we're going to take a look at the services purchasing manager index. And it it's reads in August, the services PMI registered 51.5%, a 0.1 percentage increase compared to the July reading of 51.4%. 
A reading above 50% indicates the services sector economy is generally expanding, and below 50% indicates it is generally contracting. And a services PMI above 49% over time generally indicates an expansion in the overall economy. So at 51.5%, <clears throat> excuse me, it's about where it was last month. To me, when I read this again, we're just over that break-even line. So when I look at uh, services, which is the largest section, largest percentage of the U.S. economy uh, compared to uh, the manufacturing, uh, we have just below uh, this break-even line. We have just above this break-even line. Again, it's kind of hovering flat. So when you see, uh, especially in this political climate we're in uh, with politicians running for uh, re-election or first-time elections and so on, whatever they're doing, uh, they, uh, they, they tend to over- exaggerate uh, whatever may be positive and down and uh, play uh, downplay things that may not be as warm and fuzzy or as uh, positive for them and so to me this just is a continuation of this just kind of things aren't feeling strong and you may feel that in your own business or see that in your own segment of business that you're in okay uh, the third report, this is the newest report by the Purchasing Managers Index, and this is the hospital PMI, and it's at 58.6%. And I'll read it, start at the second paragraph here. It says the hospital PMI registered 58.6% in August, a 5.3 percentage point increase from the July reading of 53.3%, indicating a 12th consecutive month of growth after a contraction in August of 2023. Um and so when we look at this report, we can see that it's uh, up. And uh, what's interesting, you can see the last two and a half years or so on this chart, if if you're watching live or watching the video of this, uh, if you are just audio only, you'll see these big zigs and zags up and down, big, very drastic as compared to the other two charts that that have some bumps in the road, but they're they're much uh, uh, much closer together. And uh, so for me, part of this is when I look at this, I think, well, this is I know that this is their newest report. Uh, so I don't know how many uh, uh, the exact number of participants on the report for it. So maybe one or two are swinging it. But also it's a hospital purchasing managers index, which may, may very well indicate that it's going up and down based on seasonality, potentially, of uh, the seasonality of uh, uh, seasonal uh, flu or cold or uh, whatever it might be uh, going through at the time. So uh, there very well may be some seasonality associated with that also. Um, but uh, it's showing up here, uh, it, it, uh, up significantly from last month, all things said. That's a pretty good indicator for us. Okay, next report we take a look at is the U.S. unemployment rate uh, by tradingeconomics.com uh, puts this uh, publishes this data that's put that that they gather from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and it says the unemployment rate in the United States eased to uh, 4.2 percent in August of 2024 from the uh, October 2021 high of 4.3. Uh, and so you can see this uh, percent change here in terms of the, the chart and report and what we're looking at. Uh, July was at 4.3%. It's 4.2% for the unemployment rate. And I think the big thing that for us to know is the uh, uh, number of new hires that have been reported, which uh, uh, that, that have been reported. Um, let's see if I can find that really quickly. Um uh, the number of new hires uh, per month uh, has been downgraded uh, uh, in many months in a row. And so uh, there seems to be an inflation by the U.S. Uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics is publishing uh, the unemployment rate and publishing the uh, number of new hires. So uh, I think that's just something worth noting that when those reports come out, I don't know if we can necessarily trust those numbers, given the trend of consistently downgrading what those actual numbers are. So uh, this this may or may not change based on that, but uh, unemployment has been on this uh, steady uh, rise, a general trend of increasing uh, since the really the February of this year. Okay, uh, the inflation rate. So we can see here the inflation, the annual, it's, this is tradingeconomics.com. 
uh, uh, for their U.S. inflation rate. And it says the annual inflation rate for the U.S. slowed for a fifth consecutive month to 2.5 percent to in August of 2024, the lowest since February 2021. Uh, so we'll scan down and look at these uh, charts here. So you can see a big drop in July. It was 2.9 percent. August, 2.5 percent. Back in June of this year, 3 percent. In March of this year was the, the peak for this year at 3.5 percent. And September of last year was 3.7 percent. Uh, we can look at that five year. Uh, if we go back five years, you can can see uh, where it was pre COVID, then through COVID, and where we are today. Um, we're still at, um, uh, you know, we're still at some numbers that are starting to uh, be closer. There, actually, January of 2020 was 2.5 percent uh, based on this chart here, and August of 24 is 2.5 percent. Uh, that that we're looking at. So uh, just something to to take note of. I think that's a positive sign to see that inflation continue to go down. Um, the one thing to remember on inflation, which is really the impact of what we're feeling uh, when uh, the uh, go when governments uh, print money and it, it increases the money supply, uh, prices just naturally go up. It's simple supply and demand. There's more greater demand with the same or the, with with the, at best the same amount of supply. Uh, so as de that demand increases, well, I mean, there's just not as much to go around. <laughs> and so we get this inflation that increases, you know, just to break it down relatively simple there. And so we see um, things slowly starting to come down. And that, in, in my opinion, is large part why we see uh, grocery prices up and we see prices just about everywhere are up. You feel that pinch in your pocketbook a, a lot more today and and that you're not seeing that ease so that that when when we look at these charts from macro level to me it helps shed some light on what are the what's the what's the pain point we're feeling here what what are we uh what what's the cause of that well, we start to see it's like oh well it makes sense it doesn't change it from hurting but at least it it helps make sense um you know and and it's not like uh you know inflation it's not like businesses just became greedy overnight uh <laughs> to uh increase prices and such and and uh all of them. So, uh, okay, let's take a look at the index of consumer sentiment here. This is from the University of Michigan. They published this for, well, at least 50 years. Um, but this is the 10 year marker. So it, it takes a look at what is the consumer sentiment. I'll zoom in on this. And you can see a nice upward trend. Uh, it zigs and zags that were bottomed out around mid 2022. So, around about two years ago, we saw this bottom. Uh, that it hit, and it's just been slowly bumping up. Uh, we saw it; it's ticked down the last couple of months, where it's around the 67-ish percent or so, 68%, uh, uh, just my best estimate looking at the, the uh, graph here. Um, but we see this trend line going up, which in general means that the consumer is gaining a little more confidence in buying stuff. Uh, and so consumer confidence is important for all of us to know. And so hopefully if you've, you're running a business, you've seen that two years ago is probably a lot harder to get a sale than it is today, uh, just in general, uh, because your consumer sentiment, the general overall consumer sentiment is improving, uh, albeit still not where it was pre-COVID uh, uh, numbers, pre-2020 here, where we can see it was, goodness, close to, you know, in between 95 and 100 hundred. Uh, uh, index value off this chart here. Um, so, okay. Uh, next up is from the uh, business formation statistics. Uh, this was released August 14th. So uh, we still don't have the newest one for September. I thought it was going to be out. I was hoping it would be out by today. Um, so it may come out next week here that we get that. But this is still the data from last month to take a look at. And it still shows, I still like it's worth noting and taking a look at that you can see the total number of new business startups in the US in uh, July of this year and you can see it's still over 400,000 new business startups. We're starting to see a trend here from about uh, mid-2023 to uh, uh, July of this year, where we're starting to see the the, the decline, uh, a, a steady decline coming down in terms of new business startups. It looks like it was about 460, 
70,000 ish or so, uh, best estimate off of looking at this chart. And when, when I look at that, what does it mean? Well, to me, it says uh, entrepreneurship startup is on the minds of people uh, it, it uh, on Americans. Uh, so uh, if someone inquires about your franchise, or maybe you're thinking of starting a business, if you dialed into this, but if if, if someone has uh, uh, inquired about buying your franchise, I think it's important to note that uh, franchise, the, the that franchisees very likely is very serious about starting a business. Uh, I think you need to assume that. Uh, you can see it even pre- you know, COVID, you know, these 2019 or, or early 2020 numbers, but before COVID stuff, you can see it was right around 300,000 a year for, or 300,000 a month, you know, for a couple of years there. And then all of a sudden, boom, over 400,000. I mean, it's more than a, uh, 30, you know, 33% increase. You probably, if you do the math, we're going to be close to about 40% or so increase. That's substantial in my opinion. Uh, and the sustaining of it for several years now, we continue to see entrepreneurship startup is on the minds of others. So when that lead comes in, that inquiry comes in, you need to take it seriously as a marketer or a franchise seller as you're going through that. Okay. Next, let's take a look at the FranchiseInsights.com. FranchiseInsights.com. This is one of my favorite uh, reports uh, that they publish. It's the Small Business Startup Sentiment Index. So we'll uh, take a look through it. it. It says this is for this was released September 2nd, 2024. And this says startup sentiment is saying now is a good time to start a business here. It says almost 63% of aspiring business owners survey to either agree or strongly agree that now is a good time to start a business with optimism about conditions ahead. So that's a positive sign that we're seeing here. So you can see this chart. Uh, it, it's a, a nice little spike. It looks like it's the highest in, in about six months that we're seeing this rating come through here. Um, so I think that's uh, a good to see that startup sentiment is high now. So what does that mean? Well, if you're selling franchises, that means that when people, again, reiterating that thought, when people are coming in, it's likely that they're very serious about starting a business. So you need to assume that you're, you're, you need to help that franchise candidate understand why your franchise offering is going to help them accomplish their goal they're looking for and starting a new business and getting that going. Okay, let's take a look, a scroll down. Um, uh, I always like to, uh, it, they, they, uh, the, one of the survey questions is, asks, when does this person look to start their new business? When are they looking to do it? And 84% expect to, to, that, that they're going to get their startup going in the next 12 months. And in the next month or the next two to three months, it's this green and yellow on the far right bar here. You add those two together, that's 48% of the respondents said, I'm looking to start now or in the next two to three months. So it's almost half of the people surveyed said they're looking to get this started uh, uh, almost immediately. So I think that's a, a, a thing for you to take a look at. Uh, one other noteworthy um, uh, uh a question or survey is they ask which of these factors will have the biggest impact in the next six months on your decision to start a business. Now, this number has been steady and consistent every month we continue to do this and funding or access to credit is the number one uh, in, uh, factor impacting someone starting a business. So having some form of way to help support your franchisees, whether that's in in-house financing, referrals to third-party lenders, or helping them figure out a way to maybe find maybe business partners, or maybe they have some family or friends that would like to get involved with them. But having a, a clear pathway to communicate or share some resources or help a candidate um, will help calm their what on average is going to be the biggest concern for the average buyer coming in. Economic climate is, has really increased to 40% here. So some of what we're talking about, just kind of feeling these uh, different uh, indicators where it just feels, uh, the best way I can describe it is just soft. It just, it feels soft. And I think 
that's probably because it is not quite sure uh, what's happening with the economy. Some indicators are a little positive, some are negative, you know, and it's kind of this mixed bag of things that make it hard to assess what's actually going on. So uh, for for to tackle this uh, question in, in, in what, whatever you're selling, but especially specifically in franchise sales, uh, having an, a solution or some kind of a, maybe even it's not a solution, but at least a response to how your franchise system is addressing these economic climate conditions uh, to be prepared to help a franchisee through it. And by the way, for your other franchisees in your network, this is going to be helpful too, to have a solution. Uh, political changes is 24 um, percent. Typically, an election year, as we get closer to, uh, uh, or I should say, at least presidential election, we tend to see political changes uh, go up a, a little bit. Um, but you can see still it's it's uh, it's w the third highest, but still much less than the other two conditions here that are driving that that uh, buyers are are uh, budding entrepreneurs are concerned about. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, percentage of people looking to buy a franchise right now, 47.4% are Gen Xers, 24.7% uh, are baby boomers, 23.7% are uh, millennials. Uh, and then we've got Gen Z and silent generation, you know, around that 1% ish or so um, uh, coming in there. So your big three, uh, about half of your buyers are going to be Gen X, about a quarter millennials and about a quarter um, uh, um, uh, baby boomers that are still uh, looking to do something that are looking to start a business. So uh, I assume uh, 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 when, when I take a look at this, you know, that's just what uh, a, a good percentage to gauge and work from. Okay. Uh, this is from FranchiseInsights.com. This was published September 10th. This was published yesterday. And it says franchisee, franchises preferred uh, over startups from scratch or legacy businesses for sale. And the chart, if you're just listening in, it said, uh, what options are you considering for owning a business? And 42.3% of the respondents said they're looking to buy an existing business. 43.3% said they're looking to start a non-franchise business from scratch. So essentially just a traditional startup uh, independent. And 59.6% of the respondents said they want to buy a franchise. Now, what I don't know for sure on the data is um, – since this is coming from Franchise Insights, if maybe some of the people that are coming to take the survey may have been already searching, which is how they came across some of the Franchise Insights properties that may influence that number. Um, but either way, it's still worth noting that buying an existing business and startup or a, a starting up an independent are about the same in, ter uh, in terms of what people are looking for, and that buying a franchise is, is uh, a lot higher than those two. So uh, I think it's just worth noting that there tends to be a preference in their respondents for that at this point. Okay. Uh, to all of the franchise marketers and franchise sellers out there, I think this is just a really, really important lesson to take a look at and to review. I'll zoom in on this. Uh, this is franchiseinsights.com and the, the uh, uh, headline reads with lots of options to choose from how do prospects find your franchise brand. And so they asked uh, the, these uh, respondents in a mystery shopping survey, it said, how familiar were you with the franchise or franchises to which you inquired? And this was published on August 28th, 2024 by Michael Alston and Franchise Insights. And 7.1% said they were very familiar with the franchise. 19% said that they were already uh, or somewhat familiar these are the two big numbers to me. So that that's about 26% said that they're either very familiar or somewhat familiar. 35.7% uh, said they are vaguely familiar. And then 38.1% said they are completely unfamiliar. So if we add up the unfamiliar, completely unfamiliar with vaguely familiar, that we're, we're talking about, uh, what is that, 70 about 73, 74, almost 74% of respondents said that they are completely unfamiliar or vaguely familiar. So that that means that 
most of the people that are likely to inquire about your brand are not familiar with it. So a know that coming in, that means, what does that mean? Well, it means you're going to make sure you need to take that time to explain about your brand and what it is and why you're different and how, how you um, uh, can help be a solution to uh, this person's uh, interest in, in business ownership through, through buying a franchise. Okay, uh, let's see here. We talked about business startups, 93.3% perceive business conditions the same or better in three months. So uh, this was published September 4th by Franchise Business Insights, but business buyers look beyond November or election for their startups. So they said uh, they see conditions, uh, they perceive conditions as the same or better in three months months uh, for a business startup. Uh, and that's reaching a big uh, peak. It's matching a peak since it looks like September of 2021. So it's three years since the level has been that high. Um, okay. Next, we like to take a look at the top 10 categories. So this is the percentage of inquiries by franchise category through Franchise Insights, which is owned by Franchise Ventures, which owns a bunch of franchise lead generation uh, uh, properties and these franchise portals and lead aggregators. Uh, now, this is on the business opportunity page. And the reason I'm showing this is because I'm pretty sure that the business opportunity and the franchise page for each of them switched. So I'll show you, this is the franchise page. And the reason I, I think they switched is uh, one, Business opportunities, just generic, is listed in the franchise page. Well, franchising and business opportunities shouldn't be paired together. Those are generally kept separate. Uh, and secondly, uh, this list is much more consistent with the list that was listed before, which has had home services ranked as number one or right at number one for the last four years or so. Um, so the category, so that's why I show this one here. Uh, home services is showing that 22.2% of all leads inquiries coming through are for home services. Business services at 14.2%. Cleaning and maintenance, 13.3%. Food and restaurant, 11.3%. Senior and healthcare, 10.1%. Pet services has really grown. It's 8.1%. Retail, 37 Child-related, 33 Education, 27 Vending, 19 um, so, uh, again, this is showing on the business opportunity categories, um, but I think this is worth noting. Uh, what, how, Why this matters is if you are in one of these top 10 categories, generally that means it should be easier for you to attract leads. It should be easier, and especially if you're in the, the top five here, it should be a lot easier to find leads or opportunities. Um Versus not. Now, so what does that mean? Well, it, it's easier if you're in the category, but what if you're not? What if your brand or business isn't in one of those categories? Well, that just means your lead flow, you might need to be on more, if being more uh, 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 listed on more either franchise portals, or you might be spending the same amount of money, um, but generating fewer leads for lead, lead gen, or it's just harder to find those leads. So uh, you might have to get a little more creative on the sources from which you're finding those franchises. So, all right, I will stop sharing my screen. That is my session that I was hoping to share with you today. I know we have a few folks on the line here. Uh, do we have any questions but from anyone on the line that they might like to share or talk through or talk about? Um, one thing I did not mention, it is September. We're coming into the final few months of the year. Um, as we're coming out of summer mode and back to regular business and life mode, I think it's important uh, for you to be re reminding some of your franchise candidates that there's still time to get to get uh, into the fran your franchise system before the end of the year. Uh, and I know when I speak with uh, clients and people in franchising that are not as familiar with the franchise sales process, there's an assumption that come Thanksgiving or Christmas and some of these other holidays that franchise sales just kind of falls off in the fourth quarter. And that's not necessarily true. I've, I've, I've tended to see through our clients and other uh, industry peers that the fourth quarter tends to be a just fine quarter uh, for franchise sales. So don't, don't uh, mentally defeat yourself 
with franchise sales before the uh, before the end of the year. On the contrary, you should be using this as an opportunity to uh, have tie up any loose ends with folks that are serious. And if someone is committed verbally or you they have told you they want to do this or they're planning to do this, well, use the end of the year as a good launch time or a good date to a good way to use that to help close out the get the paperwork done and say let's get this done before the end of the year so you can go into 2025 full steam ahead with maybe site selection or buying your equipment doing whatever you need to do there so i am not seeing any questions come through from our audience so i just like to thank you all for being here with me today i really appreciate it um uh, as always check us out at bigskyfranchiseteam.com subscribe to our podcasts if you have not we will republish this on our youtube channel which is big sky franchise team on youtube our our franchise your business podcast uh, and then you can also subscribe to our Multiply Your Success podcast. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. And uh, hopefully I'll see you at some of these uh, upcoming trade show events that we'll be exhibiting at. And if we're, if we're in town near you, um, I'd love to connect and see you over at, at one of our booths. Thanks so much. Oh, wait, we've, we've got a quick question. Uh, Dan, go ahead. You're unmuted. Hey, I would just wanted to say hi and check and see if you were going to be in Tampa. Yeah, I, I will be. Yeah, I yeah. will be in Tampa. Are you going to be? I'll be there. Yeah, I'm uh, going to be there with a client of mine out of New out of New Zealand called Eat Gather Love. Uh, it's a kitchen okay. kitchen uh, refacing business. So I'll see you there. Okay. Well, I'm look looking forward to seeing you there. That sounds great. Uh, we'll get a little FaceTime. Sounds great. All right. All right. Take care. Thanks. For Thanks for being here. Right. You you got it. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.